Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Ask Auntie. I'm Priyanka Bhardwaj, founder and CEO of Marriage Broker Auntie. In today's episode, I wanted to answer a question that I got on Instagram. So uh, somebody asked me, is it possible to finish a partner search within one to three years? Otherwise, it gets very exhausting. Um, now, I absolutely feel you. Uh, in general, it is a very tiring process. Just even the way it is designed today, despite you know using technology, um, it doesn't make it any easier. Uh, so I know that you know everybody out there is focused on entering and exiting uh, the marriage market as uh, fast as possible. But I'm going to explain two different approaches that people take, and depending on how you think and depending on how you feel suitable for yourself, you should absolutely take that approach. So people either look at partner search as being one part of their life, part of their lifestyle. They they don't want to, let's say, dedicate one year just for looking for a partner, putting everything else on hold. They want their life to keep going. And on the way, if they meet somebody, you know, they, they want to pursue that. And on the other hand, there are people who want to dedicate six months or one year and start and be done with it. And during that time, they put everything else on hold. So I want to explain each of these individually to so that you can understand what it would look like for you to take a call on what would be best suitable for you. Now, before even I explain that, let me tell you that there is a huge role that luck plays. This is an extremely random process uh, in terms of when and where and how you find your partner. So it could happen either tomorrow or it could happen 10 years later. Nobody knows that and you unfortunately cannot control that. So whatever makes you feel a little bit more in control or you know, prevents you from being, feeling anxious or nervous about the whole thing, you know, you should absolutely do that. Now, if you want to look at partner search as an independent activity that you need to focus all your efforts on and put everything on hold, the way you should approach it is, you know, you um, maximize your odds by putting the word everywhere possible that you are single and you are looking for a partner and you're looking to get married in the next, I don't know, one to two year time frame, right? So once you put the word out there, it could be through family, it could be through friends, then everybody is also supporting your cause and there is a lot of momentum that is built for you to go out there and, you know, do your search. Now, apart from telling friends and family, you also need to go and be out there on every possible matrimonial app uh, or dating app there is. So your bar matrimony, shadi, whatever, all of those apps, your community matrimonial sites, your uh, community marriage broker or your uh, neighborhood marriage broker, whatever it is, right? So you need to put yourself out there, you know, in all of these places and actually spend a good three to six months, you know, uh, spending dedicated, consistent effort uh, day in and day out. I mean, maybe not every day, but at least, you know, on a weekly basis, if you're not dedicating a few minutes to the search, um, then then you will find yourself doing this for years together with very little luck, right? And also, one of the very first steps to do before even you embark on this journey is to be very clear about what you want. And I know a lot of people feel like they know exactly what they want and no one needs to tell them. Believe me, I've worked with hundreds of people who felt the exact same way, but they've changed their mind once they've been frauded and cornered to a point where they really have had to, you know, think through their uh, preferences. Now, it's not like you don't know what you want. It's just that you don't know in what order you want them or what you're willing to trade off. So if you sat down and asked yourself, what are the things you want from a relationship and what are the things you're willing to trade off, you will find that your answer will be slightly different from what you had thought before doing this exercise. Now, if you feel like you are not able to do this alone and you need some support, I'm going to leave a link below to my website. You can absolutely book a session with me if you feel like you want to do this with somebody. Now... Spending three to six months feels like a long time, but in the larger scheme of things, in a relationship that you will live for, you know, I don't know, like 30, 40, 50 years, 
it's nothing right uh, so you should you should consider spending this time only once you feel like the other parts of your life it could be a career personal issues etc are somewhat under control and you can actually spend dedicated effort trying to uh, chase all channels that you've invested your efforts in now this is about searching independently like you know looking at partner search as an independent activity and and trying to be as efficient as possible with it now the other way to approach it is looking at this as being a part of your lifestyle which means your focus should be on building your personal network it's not about being on a dating app meeting 20 different people every you know week and you know trying to see which one works out because in that process you're not building relationships you are flipping through a magazine essentially right uh, the more pages you flip through the lesser attention you will pay and the higher your bar to pay attention to someone will be and it is an exhausting process you will end up feeling really spent so the way to look at partner search becomes drastically different you are not looking at new opportunities where you go and meet people as hey i could find my partner here today you're looking at it as i am looking to build my personal network in the process if i find a partner then you know fabulous otherwise you know i have a huge network to count on to be able to supply me with possible prospective matches so when you meet somebody you're not meeting them with the idea that hey this person could be my partner because then you're limiting the number of people you can meet but if you meet somebody saying hey this person could be the person who will introduce me to my future partner then you have a larger group of people that you're working with and if you look at this as a part of your lifestyle then you will be much more interested in pursuing leads that come through references rather than you know going on to an app or um you know doing this the traditional sort of arranged marriage way so although although uh you know looking at partner search as being a part of your lifestyle is not efficient um it is a lot um less stressful it is a lot less intense there is far lesser pressure but however you need a certain type of mindset to be able to do this without a deadline there is no certainty there there's no guarantee there the people that you meet may or may not be prospective matches the people that you meet may or may not be interested in looking to get married anytime soon so there are no guarantees in that route so depending on how you feel and what you relate to you should absolutely pursue uh, that route to find yourself a partner now i hope this answer was helpful uh if you have any questions at all uh do feel free to leave your comments below if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel please do so because there are tons of videos coming up about love dating marriages relationships um and and anything to do with that so thank you very much for all your questions once again i look forward to seeing you next week take care